there's one thing Americans can all agree on, left, right, and center, it's that everything is too damn expensive. But where the blame for the economic malaise goes is a matter of debate. Former Arizona gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake placed the blame squarely at Joe Biden's feet, tweeting, food, transportation, housing, and energy are the basic necessities we need to survive. Thanks to Bidenomics, we're spending an extra $11,400 annually on them. No amount of gaslighting from Joe Biden can distract from the fact that we can barely afford to keep the lights on. But Biden hit back at GOP critics, namely Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, taking credit for what his administration sees as a booming economy. Let's listen. The historic investments we're celebrating today is in Congressman Boebert's district. She's one of the leaders of this extreme mega movement. She, along with every single Republican colleague, voted against the law that made these investments and jobs possible. And that's not hyperbole, that's a fact. And then she voted to repeal key parts of this law. And she called this law a massive failure. You all know you're part of a massive failure? Tell that to the 850 Colorados who get new jobs in Pueblo and CS Win thanks to this law. Tell that to the local economy that's going to benefit from these investments. This feels like one of those everybody's a little bit right and everybody's a little bit wrong ones for me. I think it's absolutely true. Uh, the CBS report that people require another another eleven hundred uh, uh, eleven thousand four hundred dollars a year to feel as financially safe as they did in 2021 is absolutely true. And the Biden administration trying to gaslight people out of that reality isn't working. There are sectors in which the economy has rebounded. But if you discreetly look at some of these areas like housing costs and food costs, core costs for Americans and families, those are up. And you can't just hand wave that away. At the same time, I think it is true that Republicans do like to exploit these kinds of economic downturns and blame Democrats for them without putting forward any policies of their own that would actually ameliorate the conditions people are complaining about. Mm, yeah, I do think Republicans should do a better job of sharing what their economic strategy would be. Um, I just find it mind boggling that the Biden administration, for one, has decided to trot out this term Bidenomics <laughs> when people recognize that the economy is really bad. And you have polling consistently showing that voters trust Trump and pretty much any Republican candidate more than Biden on the economy. To then run on the economy is like just political strategy, like idiocy <laughs> at its core. I mean, yeah. it's just really really amazing. And then also the Biden administration, um, as you said, really downplaying Americans' concerns and not taking them seriously. I mean, for them to put out that infographic ahead of Thanksgiving, where they touted the cost of Thanksgiving dinner being down this year from last year, when it's still markedly more expensive than when Biden took office, it's very similar to the way they talk about inflation, right? They say, oh, inflation is down. Okay, well, inflation was at under 2% when Biden took office and then skyrocketed to 9% and is now down to 3%. So prices are still rising more quickly than than they were when you took office, celebrating the fact that inflation is down as Americans are paying so much more for basic necessities is yeah. very insulting. Yeah, I, I interviewed um, months ago an economic expert um, named uh, Fidel Kaboob, and he was explaining to me that inflation is really driven by four main sectors right now, and it's like education, healthcare, uh, transportation, um, and I think food was the fourth sector. And if you think about that, that is exactly those pressure points that Americans are complaining about. The cost of cars are astronomical. A, a, a used um, Subarus going for like $40,000. The cost of housing is at unprecedented highs. They, it's considered to be um, appropriate to pay no more than a third of your income on housing costs. People routinely paying 50% or more of their uh, income on housing costs. Education, whatever you think about the um, policy to cancel student debt or whether or not people should go to college or whether it was their own fault, it is something that people are living with. And the failure of Joe Biden's plan to cancel student debt is really hitting people in the pocketbooks. And you can say, well, that's not his fault. That was the Supreme Court. I would quibble with that. But even if you believe it's not his fault, it certainly was his fault to turn on the student lo uh, the loans uh, uh, back on in the moratorium that Donald Trump put into effect back in 2020, which was really easing people's financial burden. Um, and of course, we've discussed uh, food costs already. So 
you know, at the end of the day, Biden is responsible for all of those kinds of things. Biden has to speak to those very real concerns. Oh, healthcare, healthcare is the last cost. Now, I will say Joe Biden has done on the margins, some things to cap the prices of certain medic medications like insulin costs. And it, it is worth noting that when you look at what Republicans are proposing on the alternative, Donald Trump, who has had now six, seven years to come up with an alternative to Obamacare, is still just saying, I would repeal Obamacare, get away, give up protections for pre-existing -con conditions, kicking people off their health care um, that people can stay on now until they're 26 years old. Um, you know, getting rid of all of the benefits of it without coming up with an alternative plan, I think that's a mistake. And, and again, voters are going to have to see if the alternative is actually better than the status quo. But the fundamental criticism that Biden hasn't done enough on those four areas, I think, is very legitimate. Yeah, I mean, I was on Obamacare for a bit when I was an independent contractor, and it's stunningly expensive. It is expensive. Um, especially for, I mean, as a young, single, healthy person at the time, it was insane how much I was paying in premiums for relatively poor health insurance compared to, so growing up, my dad was in a union, so mm -hmm. we had great health insurance. Mm -hmm. And of course, that was grandfathered in thanks to some Republican negotiation, mind you, during uh, the whole Obamacare debate. And so we were lucky to have that. But a lot of people lost their plans and had to go into the exchange and got comparatively worse health care as a result. I 100% agree. The Republicans have a huge opportunity on this issue that they have not taken. And I I, uh, I reported during the Trump administration that it was the Heritage Foundation and a few other conservative groups that were trying to cobble together some idea of a health care plan to replace Obamacare. Of course, that conversation was pretty moot at that point because after McCain voting down the skinny repeal, no one had a really an appetite to revisit the issue. But I hope that it comes back into the fold I mean, because look, it's, I mean, <laughs> it's a serious problem for it, Americans serious, still to this it's day. It's a serious problem. And part of the issue is that we already have the Republican health care plan because Obamacare was just Romney care. So no wonder Republicans are struggling to come up with an alternative. I would argue, and as would 49 percent of Republicans and 88 percent of Democrats, that the answer here here is to get the kind of negotiated benefits that many unions enjoy in the form of a universal health care program where costs are brought down because everyone, including young, healthy people, buy into the program and bring down costs. And part of the issue with Obamacare is that without that mandate, which I know is a scary word and people object to for various reasons, um, you do not have the cost savings. There has to be a kind of collective choice as a community whether or not we want to live with a system where your ability to stay employed is tied to your ability to keep a job in this economy, <laughs> it's tied to your ability to keep a job, and especially given that when you're sick, oftentimes you can no longer work and your whole family is then jeopardized, their health is then jeopardized because you can no longer um, work. Is that the kind of system that we want to have, or do we think that some things should be outside of the profit motive? And one of those is whether or not you, as an American citizen, can get treatment for a debilitating, perhaps deadly disease when you're sick, regardless of if you're too, to, uh, too poor rather, to afford treatment. Yeah, and just to bring this conversation back around to the Bidenomics and, and, and the economy, um, to your point about the the issue with with jobs right now, one of the other really slap in the face thing that I think the Biden administration has done is take credit for all of the jobs that returned after the pandemic and say that Biden created them as a part of Bidenomics, and it's just another constant source of frustration for me to see how they routinely try to take credit for um, what, are, what couldn't even be considered victories because it was just the economy naturally returning to its pre-COVID state. And meanwhile, we still have all of these issues with inflation and interest rates and, and housing prices and, and so many other uh, really detrimental aspects to the economy that they um, try to reject credit for, and you can't really have it both ways. Yeah, I think that's true. I think that every Republican, uh, sorry, every candidate, every uh, president, rather, gets into office and claims credit for things that are oftentimes just the, the swings flow, of a, right. a, the economy, and certainly nobody was responsible for the pandemic. It was a, as a global uh, crisis. I would much prefer people talk about the things that they very much do have control over, and on that score, I think Biden really is failing. Stick around. We'll have more rising for you right after this.